Let's go over a BJT application as a switch. We're going to drive a motor, a little small motor, and uh, we'll use this uh, BJT here. It's an NPN and it's a, Z, it's a ZTX696B. And we'll talk about why I chose that for this application. But what I'm going to do first is just kind of just let's look at the circuit. So what we have here is we've got this current that's going through the motor and it's going through the BJT and when we use it as a switch we know the BJT is going to be working in saturation. To fully saturate it then we've got this current going through here, our, our base current and it's going to go through here and it's going to be balanced to the point of we're going to put this gain into it, the gain is a hundred but essentially the current that goes through here has to be one one hundredth of the current going through the collector. Good. So let's actually walk through the steps, but first let's just take a look at what's going on here. Okay, look at this motor. That's motor. This motor is well. <laughs> it's a pretty cool motor. It's a little tiny motor. I got, I got a motor my hands right here. <laughs> That's where I was like, where's that motor? It's about that big. I just pulled this out of my equipment drawer. But it's a little tiny motor. Uh, it runs at 200 milliamps. But let's just take a look at the data sheet. Okay. So what I've got here is I've got this little guy. It's a 12 volt motor. Look how fast it's going. Whoa, it's get whoa, 10,000 RPM. That's pretty good. That's pretty fast, eh? Okay, so it's going that fast, and it's a 2.4 watt motor. What I did was I calculated the internal resistance because resistance is a number that actually we want to use in our calculations. Uh, the data sheet doesn't actually have resistance on it, but it's got power and it has voltage, so I calculated resistance from there. Cool, so that's the motor. Let's talk about the BJT. So this BJT here is a BJT, it's an MPN, and you can see, I guess I don't need to put that on the board, you can see that the uh, collector current max is 500 milliamps. Just a little bit, but that's okay, because all we actually need is two. So we're good with that. So the other thing over here is that, yeah, it's an MPN, and what else do we see about it here? Actually, there's nothing actually on here. This is a screenshot from the DigiKey website. But let's actually delve into the screenshot, into the into the actual data sheet that I pulled off DigiKey. And let's take a look at that. So if we actually look at the data sheet, we can take a look at the gain. And you can see the gain is 100 minimum. Yeah. So that's the smallest amount it can be. Before we continue looking at the gain, let's just look at some other things here. Oh, it looks like the saturation, uh, the current to emitter saturation is not 0.2, sometimes it's 0.3, sometimes 0.4, but in this case it's 0.25. So it's, we have to note that, and I, and I wrote that here because it's important because it's going to go into our math. The other thing that's actually interesting about this guy is if you look down here, look at that. The base emitter voltage, it's 1.2 volts. So we also have to put that, ooh, I think I put 1.5. Oh, I did. Okay, well, we'll just roll with that because I've already done the math. We'll pretend. Okay, so 1.2 volts is the emitter base, and we know that that number is usually around 0.7, or at least that's what we've been looking at in class. But that value changes as well. Okay, so back to the gain. Let's take a look at the gain. I actually want to take a look at like the actual how gain changes. So if we if we look at if we look at the gain chart, okay, you can see that it changes quite a bit. And it, there are two graphs on here. One is for a really hot gain, and the other is for a cold gain. Twenty five degrees Celsius is something that it's going to be operating in. It's it's not going to get that hot. We're not pushing it. We're not asking it to have a lot more current to go through that than it's designed. We're not even going in. We're going about 40%. So if we take a look at the gain, on this one, it's really stable. It doesn't change a whole lot. But as we can see, that as the current in the collector increases a little bit, the gain does go down some. Okay, so this is pretty stable. So actually, just take a look at that. Take a look at 200. So if we go up to 200, we're crossing the gain line at just a little bit over 100, but you can see that the gain actually goes below 100 as well. So if you're pushing this thing to the maximum amount of current that it can take, then your gain sneaks down a little bit. But we're good. We're way underneath, so we're going to go with a gain of 100. Okay, cool. So let's actually do the math. Now, you know the first step is we have to calculate the saturation current, which is also the current that's going through the resistor, or in this case, it's the motor. So, step one. 
We have to calculate I C sat. We have to calculate the saturation current. And in that case, I C sat is going to equal the voltage drop across this guy divided by its resistance. Is that okay? I mean, it's Ohm's law. But the voltage drop across that is just a little bit different. We have to do VCC minus VCE. This is a, just a little bit of a number here, but it actually makes a bit of a difference. Okay, and that's divided by the resistance in this case of the motor. So right there, I've already calculated that to be 196 milliamps. 196 milliamps. So we know that that is the current, the saturation current. Cool. Okay, now for step two. Step two is we need to calculate the, the current going through here that to make that happen, and we do that with the gain. So in this case, it's the IV, and we know that IB is going to be my IC divided by my gain. And in this case, I've got, what again? 19.6. Oh, yeah, it's easy. Just move a decimal. 19.6 milliamps. So just a small amount. It's actually 1 100th, right? So we now have to figure out what resistive value is going to give us that current. That's step three. Well, that's a three looks like that. Okay, step three is calculate, calculate RB. So RB is going to be using Ohm's law, the voltage drop across the resistor divided by the current going through it. Now we know the voltage drop in this case is going to be VBB minus VBE. Now the current going through here is going to be IB. So in this case, this guy over here, well I've calculated, although that's actually 1.2, but I calculated one for, for 1.5, but we're going to roll with that. Okay, so that guy is 1.79. 1.79 kilo ohms. Cool. So if I actually had a resistor that was at that exact value, I would have the exact amount of current, exact, the exact amount of current, just, just barely, just to saturate it just exactly. Well, that's not enough for me. I want to like try and like give it way more current than it needs to saturate. That's not actually, that's why I'm not actually really worried about this 1.5 being 1.2 or whatever. We're going to choose a resistance that's actually a lot lower. Okay, cool. So step four, step four is we're going to calculate, we're going to, we're going to choose, first of all, we're going to choose a resistor and then we're going to calculate like the new current and then that's it. So if I got 1.79, I'm not going to maybe divide it by two, but you know, I'm going to go pretty low. I got a 1K uh, resistor. I got lots of them kicking around in my kit. So I'll just grab one of those and use one of those. So I know in this case is recalculate my IB with my new resistance. I'm gonna take this motor out of my pocket and stick it in the leg. Okay, here we go. So in that case, I know it's my IB is going to be my, again my VBB minus my VBE. That's a B divided by the resistance RB. And when I calculated that, I got 3.5 milliamps. Well, that's not a threat. That's 3.5 milliamps. It's turned to the right over. Yeah, so 3.5 milliamps. So 3.5 milliamps is what is going to go through here if I choose a 1K resistor and I know that I need at least 19... What is that? Oh, oh, is this did something funky? I moved my decimal wrong. Yeah, let's go back. Write stuff on the board. Here we go. Yeah, I'm all better now. Yep. Okay, now that makes sense. All right. So, yeah, dude, 3.5 milliamps is a lot bigger than 1.96 milliamps. So I'm good. It's absolutely giving enough current through the base to saturate that, and that motor will be on. So, you know what? Let's add a switch. Because if we don't have that switch, the motor's going to be running all the time. So that's BJT. Thank you for bearing with me with those decimals. Um, yeah, I think we're good. I think you guys are good. 
And uh, that's the code for the BJT. If you want to look it up, go to DigiKey and just type that in and, and you're good. Yeah, that's all. Look at